Yeah, that's a billion dollars worth of Uncle Sam's money. Yeah, tell me about it. Trying again. Damn it. Uh, Neil, I think the idea is to catch the satellite. Yeah, very funny. I've got a big problem here. Neil, talk to me. Uh, the arm's acting up. Servo controls are out of phase. Shoulder pitch is completely locked up. Uh, Houston, this is Odyssey. We have an RMS malfunction resulting in a minor collision with the payload. Over. Roger, Odyssey. We're reassessing ground track, reviewing increment two contingency. Recommend you carry out arm diagnostic error routine 3S. Also suggest you review ACU task assessment profile. Over. Roger, Houston. Satellites picked up a wobble. Definitely in for a hangover come sun up. How about pitches seriously over ramped? Houston, we are requesting a troubleshooting procedure. Pushing the backup controls. Come back, Odyssey. Did not read you, over. I am go with backup controls. Odyssey, come in, over. Odyssey, come in, over. Heading for the dance floor. Odyssey, come in, over. Uh, Houston, we have switched to backup. We're gonna take another crack at this. Odyssey, we strongly advise you wait for troubleshooting. This is not procedure, Chuck. It is today, Ed. Baby. Why does everything that comes out of your mouth have something to do with sex? Maybe because we're riding in a $3 billion phallic symbol. Don't quote me. If I started quoting you, they'd shut down the space program. Closer. Oh, baby. Put it in. Yeah. Come on. Since Drew Pearson, Super Bowl 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this tastes like the real thing. Mm. Dom 98. Mm -hmm. Got something going with one of the girls in food processing. Uh, yeah. You know, Matt, the thought that our nutritional requirements are being determined by your sexual dances doesn't exactly leave me brimming with confidence. Speaking of a lack of confidence, I don't need to remind you that I'm putting you on live TV. You make me look bad, I'm flushing you out the airlock. Not to worry, darling. I promise you a dignified exchange. But uh, now that we're on the subject of the airlock, did you know that oxygen depletion enhances the effect of sexual stimulation? I don't, I don't want to know that. <laughs> Copy that crew assignment change. This is your call, Chuck. Whatever you want to do is okay by me. He's your son, over. Well, there's something to be said for enthusiasm, Ed, but you should have waited, and he knows it. You just don't want to have to be the one to tell your wife. On the subject of wives. I think I smell those cookies from here, Ed. What did Bernice make you this time? Oh. Peanut butter macadamia. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'll ask her if she'll make up a plate of those things for me. And you better be standing by the door waiting with them when I touch down, you hear me? I'll be sure and do that. Thanks, Ed. How does the out? You know, I've spent my life jumping one hurdle after another, trying to get where I am. It's parenting. Not even sure I qualify for that event. Oh, hell, you qualify. You just got to step up. Or like my daddy used to say, get three down and locked. Three down and locked. Houston, translation maneuver complete. She's back in the pipeline, over. Uh, Roger Odyssey, you're looking fine, over.
I run diagnostics on the arm before the interview. Neil, I want to change the crew assignment. When the satellite's refitted, I want Matt to execute the redeployment. Matt. Yeah, he's got more time on the arm. We had a malfunction. I need someone with a little more experience. Why are you doing this? Neil, you're smart and you're quick. But this time, you're too quick. When that arm goes down, you wait for Houston to relay proper troubleshooting. That's procedure. You know there wasn't enough time for that. That satellite had a wicked tip off. That's not your call. You let me go ahead with the capture. I let you go ahead with the capture because in this particular set of circumstances, you happen to be right. I see. So you're pulling me because I was right. If you'd have been wrong, you'd have screwed the pooch and we'd have had a billion-dollar satellite floating up to Pluto along with your career. If you fuck up, you do not get a second chance, son. If you'd have lost that satellite, you'd be back in Houston next week looking for work as a bartender. Now, this ain't easy for me. Not bad. What's that supposed to mean? It means having me up here instead of Mark. I have work to do. Earlier today, some of the astronauts' families turned out at a rally to raise money for muscular dystrophy. We spoke with Troy Johnson, husband of Sarah Forbes, and Paige Taggart, wife of shuttle commander Chuck Taggart and mother of astronaut Neil Taggart. Well, all the attention can get overwhelming, but uh, I just try and take it one day at a time. I just try and be the best wife and mother I can be. My wife is the first journalist in outer space. I, uh, I couldn't be prouder. Hey, Sarah, if you're listening, I love you, babe. Is it hard for you as a shuttle commander having your son on the crew? Well, as a flight commander, you have to make many adjustments, and I just treat Neil as another gifted astronaut. I try to forget he's my son. Neil? I guess I just have to echo that. I, I think of him as my commander, and... Try to forget that he's my dad. Dr. Kurt Bendel, Nobel Prize winning behavioral geneticist and author of several best-selling science books, is hitching a ride to the International Space Station, where he'll be overseeing a series of experiments. Dr. Mendel, would you care to explain the specifics of the work you'll be doing? Um, well, Sarah, the thrust of my work will be to erect a series of hard protocols designed to penetrate the ins and outs of zero-g environment on DNA sequencing. Hopefully it would all come together. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure, Sarah. This is Sarah Forbes reporting to you live. You're a dead man! You're a dead man! What did I say? I answered the question. Too late. Hey, we just saw video. Maybe it's the monitor connection. Matt? Maybe the uplink's gone sour. Nah, the whole damn thing's down. Smells like a teacher's mouth. Well, the connections look solid. Control, this is Odyssey. Do you read? Over. Could be the switching unit. No, Odyssey's dead, too. Houston, this is Odyssey. Come in. Houston, this is Odyssey. Come in. Over. Houston. What the hell? God. Is that coming from us? Everybody get to the crew compartment. Now. Let's move it.
Kurt, how's Angela doing? Possible concussion. Where's the checklist? I'm serious. Serious enough. I, mean, I need a checklist for the thruster link. The hell with a checklist, a shit can OMS. Kurt, give me a straight answer, goddammit. He said she had a concussion, Taggart. What the fuck is going on? Uh, where the fuck are we? Just listen. Where is the fucking arm? Just shut up, goddammit! Now get hold of yourself and listen to me. Get the goddamn headset on. We gotta get hold of this ship, see, son? Just maintain. And open up that computer and go through this check with me. This says it's Odyssey over. Come in. Maybe one of the, the fuel tanks Houston, ruptured, and maybe that's in. what put us where we are. And where is that exactly? Well, on the other side of the moon, maybe. And maybe the Earth is behind it. Do you have any idea the amount of thrust a little trip like that would take? Sorry, folks. We haven't moved not more than a few miles anyway. Houston, this is Odyssey over. Houston. No, it's not possible. Houston, are you hearing me, Ed? Come in, over. It's impossible. Come in, Ed. Talk to me. Houston, come.
just occurred to me, this is one scenario NASA really forgot to program into their simulators. Kurt, get down to the avionics bay. I want to run a complete systems check. Oh, another procedure in the Juno Shuttle Commander's Handbook? Chucky, knock it off! Refresh my memory. Which procedure gives you license to blast a crew member into outer space? This ain't a goddamn democracy, Kurt. Get down to the avionics bay. What for? Planning to flush me out like Matt? Oh! 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 Wow! Oh! Fire an AV Bay 1. Oh. Auto extinguisher now. <laughs> Activate auto extinguisher now. Shit, there's no goddamn thing. It's in the canister, bro. Smoke's gonna be a bitch of a problem. What are you doing? I'm killing the Arctic subsystem. That recycles the oxygen. Why I took out the lithium hydroxide canister. All of them? Except the two already installed. Lithium hydroxide? They remove carbon dioxide from the air. We got enough air for 12 hours. Yeah, but with all the smoke, it means the we system has to filter to... out the smoke, so you cut that down to three. Three hours? Well, we can't live on these. They last only 45 minutes. I gotta get the smoke out of here. How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna depressurize the entire ship. What are we supposed what? to do? Hold our breath? Neil and I are climbing to the EMUs. The rest of you get in a personal rescue enclosure. Yeah, I'd like to raise an issue. What's the point of all this? To stay alive. For an extra nine hours? It's better than nothing. Is it? Nine more hours to sit around and wait for the oxygen to run out. We can't just give up, Kurt. Look out the window. Earth is not on the mission program. If ever there was a time to give up, this is it. I say we back this routine and get it over with. I want to live even if it is only for nine hours. Why? You want another interview? God damn it, Kurt! Oh, would you cut it out? It takes 20 minutes to get into the suits, 15 to clear the vent. We cannot stand around and argue. Neil's right. Break out the EMU. Sarah, take care of the personal rescue enclosures. Well, I am going to depressurize this cabin. And you can get into an enclosure if you want to. Or you can sit here and twiddle your thumbs while you decompress. But if that's your choice, do me a favor and get your ass in a sleeping bag and zip the fucker up because I do not wish to spend my last living hours cleaning up the mess. had a secret desire to be a Christmas tree ornament. Neil, what's your status? Neil, what's your status, Oliver? Ready. Closing eyes, Saul, opening cabin.
that vent's open, I saw. Thank you, thank you, thank you, darling. I love you. Mwah. Oh, God! You can join in at any time. I guess I just don't have that gene, darling. Sure sounded like you did when I opened that recovery enclosure. A slip of the tongue. Doesn't give me much comfort, does it? Not believing in an afterlife. On the contrary, it gives me lots of comfort. How can the prospect of non-existence be comforting? I look at it like this. Before I came on stage, the universe had been around for 12 billion years. All that time I was in a state of non-existence. It wasn't bad. Pretty comfortable, as a matter of fact. I figure it'll be just as comfortable for the next 12 billion years. So all of those people were wrong to believe in a higher power. Look what good it did them. What's that? It's my comfort. He died six months after that picture was taken. I what? Cancer. I'm sorry. It's OK. He's what I've got to look forward to. He and Troy, my husband, my second husband, my first marriage died not too long after my son. Two husbands after life could get pretty stormy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so strange. When NASA invited me on this mission, one of the reasons I accepted was because I thought it would bring me closer to God. My little boy. Guess I'm gonna get my wish. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. About Mark. Forget it. Why do you think he left? Auxiliary power unit. I don't think we need it anymore. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> Wasting <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> Neil, Neil, yeah. Neil, yeah. we we'll touch down. Neil, we we'll touch down. You awake? We we'll touch down somewhere. any conclusions.
Hear that? If it's heaven, it's run by machines. If it's heaven, I hope to serve coffee. This gravity is playing hell with the structural damage. We better evacuate before this thing comes down on our heads. Uh, how do we know it's any better out there? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Well, well, we should throw something out first. That? That's definitely not procedure. Expected it. What? God is an old white guy. It's probably an artificial construct, so we won't freak out. Derived from TV transmissions. How do you know that? 300 hours of Star Trek. Wow. You're all alive. That means I got the atmosphere right. It's English, isn't it? Uh, yeah. We speak English. Oh, for a second I thought I had it wrong. Now, who the hell are you? I'm the last remaining inhabitant of my world. As for my name, in my culture, we didn't use names in the same way your culture did. We identified ourselves by our uh, life purpose, which I suppose makes me the seeker. Where are we? You're aboard my ship. The same concept as that baby over there, only with about 5,000 years of technology behind it. Do you know what happened to the Earth? I do indeed. Same thing that happened to my world. Same thing that happened to over 50 other worlds. Everything gone. How? Why? That's the big mystery. 300 years ago, I was sent on a quest to locate other civilizations. But wherever I went, there was only dust. When I returned to my home world, I found the same. I've been searching the galaxy ever since. I pick up radio signals. I follow them to their source. But when I arrive, the source is always gone. I'm always too late. Like this time? Yes and no. You five are the only survivors from a sundered world that I've ever run into. Because of that, there is still a chance to save your world. But the Earth is gone. I have it in my power to project you back. Project us back. Time travel. Sort of. Physical time travel doesn't work. Mathematically impossible. Your bodies can't go back. What you think of as your consciousness can. Our souls. Well, we're really talking about information patterns. I can take your current patterns and download them into your physical selves of the past. How far past? The jump limit is around five of your years. That should give you enough time. But enough time? Enough time to stop it. 
to stop the destruction. If you can do that for us, why don't you send yourself back? Only organics can jump. Then are you what I think you are? <coughs> what can you do for her? She only has about two minutes. What do you need to send us back? All I need is the word. There's a chance in heaven to prevent this, then do it again. What are we supposed to be looking for? I can tell you this. The destroyer's attack from within. She's losing her pulse. She's losing her pulse. I can retrieve her information. She can still go back. And do it. What are you talking about? Just you can't do let do him do that. You don't do know it now. who he is or what he does. I don't give a goddamn who he is. Do it now. <laughs> your home. <laughs> you had a nightmare? Come on, we gotta get up early tomorrow. Chuck. Neil. This is Mark's room. What is wrong with you? Where's Neil? You're scaring me, Chuck. Where is he? You know where he is. <sighs> I've never seen anybody just drop like that. It's creepy. Where am I? Kaylee? That would be me. And, uh, no, I'm Wade. This is rather a very close friend, Diaz. This is a party. Yeah, yeah, man, this is a party. Yeah. Wade, I'm in junior year. Yeah. <laughs> you been taking any prescription medication we should know about? I gotta use the phone. Oh! oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Troy. Oh my god. Troy? Paul? You were expecting somebody else? No, I... I'm back. You're back. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Paula, back. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm back. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's the last time we have Mexican food after 9 p.m. <laughs> so, uh, tell me, who's Troy, anyways? Sam.
Stay right there, I'll be right over. Where are the car keys, honey? You are supposed to be at Wade's house studying for an exam. Mom? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, gosh, Mom, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. You have no idea how sorry you're going to be. Keys. Keys. What are you going to do about your son? My son? Why is he always my son? Is your son, too. I can't believe he's almost 18. Neither can I. Where are the car keys? Where you always leave them. Bird cage. Bet you never thought you'd be glad to see me. How'd you guess? Because well, I was thinking the same thing about you. Chuck? This is, uh... Oh, uh hi, you, you must be Mrs. Taggart. I'm Kurt Mandel. I'm an old buddy of Chuck's. College. 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 So what brings you out here this time of night? We've got a big problem. Uh, I've got a big problem. My, my car broke down about a mile back. I thought I'd maybe take you to the gas station. That's right. No problem. I'll be right back. What about Neil? I'll pick him up on the way back. One second she's in the Odyssey's cockpit. The next second she's on a space form five years ago. She doesn't know anything about the Earth being destroyed. The time jump or the seeker. Oh, the shit of it is, she was injured when she was projected back. No goddamn telling what kind of condition she's in now. Yeah. Fuck! Ed! What the hell is going on? We gotta talk. To Easy you. now. Take it slow, fella. Talk to who? And, and who's this? Dr. Kurt Mandel is with me. If we can talk to her, we can save her. No, hold on! Hold on, right? then, you bullheaded son of a bitch! We talk to her, we can save her. If we don't, she dies, you hear me? She dies. Angela, this is Joe. Do you read? Damn it. He's using up fuel like crazy. Another few seconds, he's in the atmosphere. Then you better give me a goddamn procedure. I'm gonna burn the OMS and bring her in with the arm. I don't care how close we are to the atmosphere. Discovery, this is Control. Go hot and air to air and activate XMIT PTT over. Roger control out. What are you gonna do? Give her a pep talk. Flight officer Farrah, this is Chuck Taggart over. Taggart. Please respond over. Flight officer Perry, take control of the MMU and return to orbiter now, over. Angela, this is your mission commander, Chuck Taggart. Now, I'm ordering you to look alive, get hold of that goddamn man maneuvering unit, and get your ass back to that ship now. Over. Angela! Angela! Three down and locked. Listen to 
Angela, like your daddy always said, get three down and locked, honey. That is it. I am giving the command. She's too close to the atmosphere. We send them in, we could lose the ship. I'm the flight director here, and I will make the call. Do you understand? What? Listen. Trouble eating? No. Gastric distress of any kind? No. Can I ask you why you think Corey might need this type of examination? Um, my family has a history of cancer. My father died of it. He was well into his 70s, if I remember correctly. He was 75. Sarah, stomach cancer in a child Corey's age is extremely rare. I realize that. I just would like to get him checked out. I mean, if you won't do it, I'll just go someplace that will. I see. I'll do a complete physical right now, and uh, I'll make an appointment at the hospital for x-rays so you can get the Today. Rules. We'll schedule it for this afternoon. Thank you. I could still smell it on his clothes this morning. He was smoking hot. We need to do something about this, Chuck. Before leaving the shuttle, Hi, this is Sarah. I can't get to the phone right now, but please leave a message after the beep. Oh, Jesus. Could I have your attention, please? Yeah, honey, I, I, I'll talk to him. He needs more than a talk. Who are you calling? I go back to the doctor today. I'm just gonna take some pictures of you, honey. You want paint? Uh -huh. Okay. Chuck Taggart, please call me at 555-0175. Hello, Sarah, this is Chuck Taggart again. Please. What you doing, honey? That's really nice, honey. Who is Sarah Forbes? Sarah Forbes, honey, is a reporter. And? And she just wants to talk to me about this thing that happened with Angela. Since when do you care so much about talking to reporters? Hello. Don't call me anymore. Sarah. I can't be a part of this. Sarah, you are a part of this. Sarah? Sarah? For the record, we were four years, 319 days, and seven hours from where we were before, which gives us exactly four years, 319 days, and seven hours to stop what's happened from happening. Sorry. Hello? Tova. 
Yeah. Well, the reason I called you was to let you know that the wedding's off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you heard me right. I know you're not with your parents, Tova. You're in Skokie with Steve. Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. In the meantime, I want you and your crap out of my apartment by tomorrow night. Thank you. Bye. Woo! Just saved myself a ton of alimony. Yeah, Kurt, you want to do the world a favor and shit can that cell phone for two minutes? It's on vibrate. You are right behind those glasses, Neil? Yeah, good, because this four years is gonna pass like a fucking heartbeat. <clears throat> Unless we stand smartly. So listen up. The seeker said, seek within your own, look within your own. What the hell was that? Maybe he meant that whoever destroyed the Earth looks just like us. Well, that narrows it down to six billion people. I'll take North America. Oh, we don't have much to go on, do we? Maybe we do. That NADCOM satellite we deployed wasn't a communication satellite. What? The NADCOM designation was just a cover. A cover for what? Something that came down through the agency's special projects division. Most I could figure out it was some sort of orbital physics experiment. The code name was Bright Sky. It was defense, wasn't it? Yeah. They used us, didn't they? Yeah. Orbital physics experiment? What the fuck is that? Hell if I know, baby. I'm just paid to hang them up in space. My clearance doesn't go that far, but I'll tell you this. When we were drifting, right before we ran out of oxygen, I searched the backup COMSYS files. There was a ground-to-air S-band transmission sent to that satellite a nanosecond before the Earth exploded. Now, it was in programming code. And I was able to decipher one word, Leviathan. Well, the good news is that we don't have to go off searching for any more destroyers. They're sitting right here at this table. You don't know that. He does. Goddamn decent of you to let us in on your little secret, Chucky. But you don't really expect us to buy into the I wasn't in the loop bullshit, do you? Kurt, do you hear that noise? That's me giving a shit about what you believe or not. Well, that's good, because I think you're a fucking liar. Hey, come on. Let's not do this. My thoughts exactly. Kurt? Where are you going? I'm going to spend the next five years getting drunk. Bye. Kurt? Kurt? No sign of compromised blood flow whatsoever. We're looking at 80% revascularization minimum. Times like this, I wish we stocked champagne. <laughs> starting up and all, and all the fellas are bugging me to get back on the lanes again. I don't care if the Pope flies in and hands you the papal bowling ball. We talked about this, Gerald. I want you to refrain from all physical activity for another six weeks, Mr. Wilkerson. Don't worry, Doctor. His bowling days are over. I'll see you next week. Bright sky. Yeah. Oh. Never heard of it. You say it's coming down through special projects? Yeah. Well, how'd you hear about it? Well, I opened up some screwball email. I thought it was from a college sweetheart. You know, the whole address turns out to be a bust, but in it, it listed every single thing I just told you, plus which at the end of it, there's some goddamn foreboding warning that some future mission is gonna be endangered. That's a prank. Maybe. It's gotta be. It's some wise ass over in data processing. I'm telling you, I wouldn't give you two shits for the college boys they're hiring today. You know, as memory serves, right before Challenger, we had a bunch of anonymous emails, didn't Come we? Come on, Chuck. Don't bring that one up, huh? Look, Ed, I, you know, I, I'm sorry I got a bug up my ass about this thing, but if it's nothing, there's nothing, there's no harm done. But if it's something, it's better we check it out rather than crash and burn. What the hell is going on around here anyway? One of the best pilots in the rotation completely loses it in the middle of a routine EVA. You come flying in out of the blue and talk her down. I still don't know how. Well, as we used to say in the old glory days, it beats flipping burgers, doesn't it? <laughs> Ed, I wouldn't ask you this. It wasn't important. Uh, 
Well, I'm not going through channels. I don't want anyone to know I'm poking around. I'll, I'll use the back door at great risk to my career. I appreciate that, pal. And I'm sorry I called you a bullheaded son of a bitch. <laughs> no, they're mutual funds too. And I want it all in cash. Larry, Larry, Larry. Yeah, I know I'm taking a big hit. Just make it happen, okay? Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Thanks, bye. Horse racing? Football. Lost my ass first go around. Not this time. Drink? No, thanks. Your door was open. Don't see much point in shutting it, I guess. Place looks bigger. Well, personally, I think she took a little more than her stuff. So, to what do I owe the pleasure? I was in the neighborhood and realized I never thanked you for saving my life. Oh, Chucky got through to you. He's who you need to thank. Yeah, well, he told me you were the one that sounded the alarm, so. Oh, just spend the next five years wisely. Take up smoking, eat plenty of red meat and dairy products, practice loads of unsafe sex. That what you plan to do? Well, for starters, mainly I plan to get insanely rich, followed by obscenely rich. What's the point if nothing will be here in five years? Well, he who dies with the most toys. Maybe we don't have to die at all. Maybe that's why we survived. Maybe we're here for a reason. I don't believe anything happens for a reason. Come on, if you can make a killing on a football game, it means we can change the way things go. How about we change the way things went? How do you live with yourself? Well, no one else will, so I might as well. Let's say we do manage to stop the world from blowing up in five years. Look around you, Angela. Is that really such a great accomplishment? I wish I could say you had changed, Kurt. But the funny thing is, you're exactly the same. And that's the problem. And that's the KNVS News for this afternoon. Join us for the action edition at 6 p.m. Urban asthma, are you at risk? Our very own Dr. Mack will bring you up to speed. KNVS, action news. Investigative, hard hitting. Back to once. Check the Ring, were you going to tell me? Tell you what? That you're taking our son in for cancer screenings. How'd you find out? Dr. Grary called me, and he told me that Corey was coming down with a cold. You lied to me. The tests were all negative. Well, you sound disappointed. But Grary said that you were taking Corey to see a specialist for more tests. That's right. What's going on? Shh. Dr. Grary's worried, but not about Corey. She's worried about you. She's using words like obsessive compulsive. She's even mentioned something called Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Do you know what that I've is? I've heard of it. It's when a parent tries to draw attention to themselves by claiming that their child has a serious illness. Dr. Gray said sometimes parents will even induce these symptoms in their children just to get people I to believe them. I would never hurt Corey. away, Paul. I watched his hair fall out. I, I watched him get so thin that he couldn't stand up. And I held him in my arms and he, he stopped breathing. And it was so real. It was, it was so real. And I just, I just have to make sure. I, I, I have to. <laughs> Sweetheart! Oh, oh, oh! Hey, Mom. Oh, it's good. 
good to have you here. One more helping of chip beef. Ham tender enough? Well, any more tender, and I wouldn't have to chew. The uh, Andersons are having a get together on Saturday night. We thought you should come along. Um. Well, I was planning on hanging out with some of the guys on Saturday. John Styles will be there. You just got a seat on the astronaut selection panel. Uh, honey, can you pass me some more corn, please? Don't you think it would be a good idea if Mark were there? I think it'd be a good idea for Mark to do whatever the hell he wants to if he wants to hang out with his friends. He can see his friends any time. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, well, John Stiles isn't going anywhere either. Chuck. Mom, it's OK. I'll, I'll be there. I'll just go with the guys on the Friday night. Wilkerson. I want that bowling ball. I said, give me that. Never touch my bowling ball again. Don't wait up. Interception on a third quarter bomb. That may have made the difference here today. And there's Joe Hansen with the Soda Weaver. Weaver taking it to the 35 yard line. Where I can't believe you're so relaxed. Maybe I'm anything but relaxed. You're about to lose so much money on this game. Bet you miles away as I doubt. You're on. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm And the handoff to Duckett. Duckett runs right up the middle. Fumble. Fumble! Hey, how do you know that was going to happen? I know many things, darling. Michigan with no more timeouts, so Kuhn has been summoned. Seconds winding down in this game. It'll hang left and squeak through. Just like me, darling. <laughs> There's the snap. And it bounces off the uprights. It's no good. Just listen to that crowd. This breaks an unbelievable. Oh. Wow, sure relax now. Hey, Bobby, checking out for the night. See you tomorrow.
president assured a Senate subcommittee on Thursday that he would make the pursuit of tax cheats a top priority. In other news, an automobile accident has claimed the life of Ed Scrivens. The veteran NASA flight director of over 50 shuttle missions. The accident took place late last night as Scrivens was on his way home from work. NASA officials describe themselves as stunned and saddened by the death of their daughter. I certainly wish you could have gone up with us. He always wanted to go, not just once. It was never one for regrets. He was just so happy that you were up there in his place. Listen, Bernice. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate. Honey, I'm going to hang around and talk to some people. I'll take Neil with me. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll see you and Mark back at the house. We're friends of Ed Scrivens. We'd like to talk to you. Be so kind to give us a moment of your time. I'm sorry, I really don't have the time right wait, now. Wait, Mrs. Wilgerson, we, 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 we know you'd be reluctant to Excuse talk. me! Wait, wait, we, no, we understand that Mr. Scrivens' family is preparing a lawsuit against you. We're not you, here to talk about any of that. We just, we're just trying to understand what happened to our friend. Please, just one moment. News special? Yes, Medical Breakthroughs of the New Millennium. It's a series we're running for sweeps. I'm Sarah Forbes of CNT. This is Dr. Mendel, my research advisor. Dr. Kurt Mendel, the author. Mm -hmm. I read one of your books a while back. Can't remember if I liked it. Well, not to worry, I probably don't remember writing it. As I was saying, you've caught me at a very bad time. We're having a serious situation with our computer system. Well, what happened? Virus, we think. Chewed into everything, got into the backups. It'll be two weeks before we know the extent of the damage. Hope to God we haven't lost everything. All of your patients' files are on the computer? Lost records are the least of our problems. I'm sure Dr. Mendel can explain it to you. I understand one of your patients was uh, recently involved in an automobile accident. I still can't believe it myself. How long have you been conducting these trials? I'm sorry. I really have to get back to work. Why don't you call my office and set up an appointment? We'll do that. Flash a spotlight in his eyes next time, why don't you? What I do? <sighs> About a year ago, uh, Gerald came down with this medical condition. A blockage in his arteries. Doctors thought he was going to die. We signed up for this free program at 
Houston General. The gene therapy trials. One of the newspapers mentioned it. I see. Well, these gene treatments, they, uh, they saved Gerald's life. What, Mrs. Wilkerson? Well, after the treatments began, Gerald started to change. Change? How did he change? Well, he just wasn't the same respectful man I married. Dr. Barron said that you know, he was overseeing the treatments. He claimed that the medication Gerald was taking could affect his mood, but this was more than that. Sometimes. It was like there was somebody else inside my husband's body. And one night, uh, I woke up, it was late, uh, after one, and Gerald was gone. He didn't get home till after 4 a.m. I asked him where he was, but he, he wouldn't talk about it. He just got angry. This went on for three nights. I, I know what you're thinking, but Gerald wasn't having an affair. Was something else. Mrs. Wilkerson, what else? I don't know. Mrs. Wilkerson, this is very, very important. One night I followed him in my car. He drove to this old storage warehouse just outside of town. There were people waiting for him men and women. At first, I didn't recognize them. Then I realized who they were. Who? They were the other people in the trials. The other patients. virus, a self-replicating polymorphic worm, built-in suicide string. Once it sucked up everything on my hard drive, it erased itself. And you caught this from Ed's workstation. Whatever he found out, it's worm food. Dr. Barrett's computer system has a virus. Sounds like someone's trying to cover their tracks. What does Ed Scriven's computer have to do with the gene therapy program? I'm a little behind the curve on the whole gene therapy thing. Well, basically, gene therapy is a process whereby you extract disease cells from a patient and alter them at a genetic level, reprogram them to execute a task. A task? Well, say to replace the remaining diseased cells. When you inject the reprogrammed cells back into the patient, bye-bye disease cells. Well, that's the theory anyway. It's still a logic experiment. Is it this cellular reprogramming is done by computers? Well, you need computers to manipulate the gene sequence. The number of combinations is staggering. So if someone got into the system, they could rewrite the information being given to the cells. Rewrite them to do what? They compelled Gerald Wilkerson to kill Ed Scrivens for one. You can't program people like that. People aren't robots. Aren't they? No. <laughs> You've heard the tales. Twins separated at birth. Both use the same brand of toothpaste. Name their kids Lloyd, love Kenny G. We are robots. We're just not made out of metal. We're meatballs. So what are you saying? Gerald Wilkerson was reprogrammed? I didn't say that. That kind of specific behavior requires a knowledge of the human genome that, that mankind hasn't even begun to approach. What if we're not talking about mankind? Son of a bitch, I knew you were going to say that. These late-night meetings Wilkerson was having with the other patients, that's got to have something to do with this. You're damn straight. That's what I'm going out there tonight. I want to see what's in that warehouse. I don't like where this is heading at all. Breaking entry. Sounds like fun. Count me in. Me too. I think I better go alone. That's not how this works. We're still a crew, and this is still a mission. Besides, you're going to need a lookout. Just testing. The end of it. The end.
Andersons are expecting us. They don't understand. But I don't. I don't understand. We've been through this, Paige. I gotta handle something at work. That's an explanation? You have something to handle at work? I already told you when Ed Scrivens died, things started to get a little hectic around at the center. If things are so hectic, then why are the Andersons still having a party? Why isn't Bert Anderson heading off with you? I cannot argue about this now, Paige. Because I'm right! You are using work as an excuse to get out of this. Why? I can't even begin to imagine. Well, you don't have to imagine, because we're gonna talk about it later! No, God damn it! Now! This party is important. Important for Mark, for his future. You don't know a goddamn thing about his future. And you do. That's right, I do! He does not give a shit about being an astronaut. He never did, he never will. You got to, you got to hear me. Because I'm gonna tell you something. And I need your help. Something happened to me on this last mission. The last mission? The last shuttle mission? Yeah, but not the mission you know. A mission that happened five years from now. What? Sit down. Just sit down. Chuck. What? Five years from now, I was in orbit with Neil. Neil? Yeah. yeah. saved by this alien. <laughs> this, hear me. Paige, we were saved by some, I don't know, being. And he sent us back here to try to stop this horrible thing from happening. This thing that's already happened. You understand? Bookie figured I had an inside tip on the game, so he put money down. Other people took his lead. They told other people, and the whole thing must have mushroomed like a feedback loop. The only thing I can figure is that word must have filtered out to the team, word that they're expected to win, and somehow this got to the kicker. And the, and the kick was close anyway. And that extra information, that extra tiny bit of pressure, threw him off. He blew the kick. <laughs> he blew the fucking kick. A simple thing like that, a rumor, changed history. Oh, God. Kind of gives you hope in a strange sort of way. Oh, tons. Is that why you decided to rejoin the cause? Well, I figured, you know, what the hell. 
I'm broke. And there's still one liter in Janet Perdue. So, what's your excuse? Scriven's death. I mean, if we don't do what we can to keep the world in one piece, it pretty much doesn't matter whether my son lives or dies. You ever think about having kids? And darling, my most significant contribution to this planet could very well be my decision not to breed. Mm. That's right, we're expendable. Angela, put a light on this game. Kirk, hold it for me. Son of a bitch! Find a Bobby Sherman 8 track, it belongs to me. Maybe not. Oh, oh my god. Organic fluorine, oxytane polymer, polyethylene. These are these chemicals are used in manufacturing. Manufacturing what? Perhaps whatever's in there. the right size for a person. Looks like motor oil. More like snot. Or some kind of amniotic fluid. 
some boating supply firm was moving in as we speak. Well, whatever they were doing, they're just gonna start over somewhere else. Eventually, but now they know somebody's on them, maybe they lie low for a while. Mm, from what I understand, Barretts' patients have all resumed normal lives. It's, it's as if nothing has happened. Well, what were they doing in there? I mean, what was that thing? That's what we gotta find out. I wonder if it's enough, but we did, enough to stop it from coming. Mm. Place a bet in Houston, I've been a whole football game. It's possible we just turned it all around. Of course, we may have just made things worse. Instead of five years from now, maybe it'll blow next week. Yeah, well, there's no way we can really know, can we? Well, at least we know more than we did when we started. What do we know? We know there's someone out there. Someone. Someone what? I was just thinking, right before the Seeker sent us back, I asked him why he didn't make the jump himself. Do you remember what he said? Only organics can jump. Which means what? That the Seeker is inorganic, artificial. 
That's my assumption. So, what do we do now? Well, first things first. Who had the bacon cheeseburger? <laughs> Rainy. Cough it up. Evolving on their own. I mean, look at this. There are organisms here I've never seen before. It's like they're constructing their own habitats. We really have something here. <sighs> yes, we do. Drives me crazy. <laughs> Thank you. 